I'm going to jump straight into the benchmarks. We're going to be putting the 9070 XT versus the 5070 Ti in path racing games. Currently, there's no path racing here in Indiana Jones. So I'm going to give you a baseline performance. You can see that despite the game always using ray tracing, the performance on the radar and GPU is actually pretty respectable. It's only slightly slower than the 5070 Ti. Now, when we kick on path tracing, I'm using balanced upscaling here, DLSS on the left and then FSR on the right. And you can see that the 5070 Ti is now twice as fast as the 9070 XT. You can see that the 9070 XT is also using about 100 watt more power uh, for about half the performance, right? So not that efficient when it comes to path tracing. Now, when we kick on performance upscaling, you can see that it it does claw back a little bit, bit of performance here. Now the 5070 Ti is only 50% faster, but we also drop down the path tracing preset to medium. So it's the high preset in game and then or for raster and then the path racing medium preset. All right, next up, we've got Quake 2 RTX and uh, just using 1440p native here. On the left, you can see that on the 5070i, there is a little bit of a stutter every now and again that tanks are lows, but on the right with the AMD GPU, you can see that the stutters are a little bit more frequent, but they're not as severe. Still, the 5070ti here doing about 30 frames per second more than the 9070XT. Although the 9070XT is definitely giving you playable performance here with above 60 frames per second at all times. All right, so if we move on to Half-Life 2 RTX and uh, <laughs> I had to use the TAAU performance on the AMD side just to get close to 60 frames per second, right? So I matched it on both just to give you an idea what the performance is like when it's both settings match. And uh, unfortunately, the game looks horrible with these settings. The game does not support FSR, it does not support FSR frame generation, it does not support any other upscaler except for TAAU and DLSS. We will be having a look at the 5070Ti's performance here using DLSS a little bit later on, but I just wanted to, to show what the performance is like here. And as I said, unfortunately, TAAU performance is the only way we can get close to 60 frames per second here on the 9070XT. The game also supports a ton more RTX features like NRC and RTX skin and ray reconstruction, transformer model for DLSS, upscaling, etc, etc. So it is definitely more aimed at RTX GPU owners, uh, but it is one of the RTX games that I do have or path tracing games that I do have. So I thought I'd throw it in. Now, if we just have a look at the 5070 Ti on its own, yeah, just using the high preset. Previously, we were using the low preset, right? So 1440p low in the previous test. Now we are using 1440p high, which has a lot more light bounces. And we are also using dialysis balanced instead of performance upscaling. And you can see the visuals look a lot better and we are mostly maintaining 60 frames per second here now you can enable dlss uh, frame generation 2x 3x and 4x in this game 3x actually works quite okay here although we'll get to a point uh, just further down the corridor there where all the barrels explode you'll see that it does drop below 60 frames per second and those depths are actually noticeable when you do use frame generation so you might just want to cater or change your settings a little bit you can see we're dropping into the high 40s here for instance right and that becomes a little bit more noticeable when you use uh, frame generation because we dropped 15 frames per second for example but if you use 3x frame generation you'll be dropping 45 frames per second now if we move on to cyberpunk i actually started out with cyberpunk but i put it in second to last i think it is second to last and uh, yeah you can see that the 5070 ti is a little bit faster about 15 frames per second at these settings using quality upscaling high preset with path tracing enabled although the 9070 xt is definitely not doing too bad here now if we kick on performance upscaling you'll see that the the 9070 xt side it looks horrible um fsr looks very bad in this game but once again, with the RTX GPU, you do have access to DLSS 4. You can use FSR 4 as well using OptiScaler, right? But it's not natively supported. And you can use frame generation for both. But you also have DLSS rate reconstruction, which makes the game look a lot better when you are using path tracing. Now, funnily enough, when we actually use frame generation, I like, I, we are going to test one frame generation test, right? You can see that uh, the 9070XD actually catches up here. And that is because FSR frame generation has slightly less overheads than DLSS. Now, if we 
this is going to be our last game. It's going to be Alan Wake. And I have the high preset selected in game, which is the highest you can go via presets. And then the second highest ray tracing preset, which is medium, but it does enable path tracing. Now you can see on the left, the image is a lot more stable because we are using Dallas S and ray reconstruction. And on the right, we do not have access to ray reconstruction and it's using FSR. That's the only other available upscale and FSR too actually does not look that good in this game. Now I did try to keep the settings a little bit more uniform, right? But obviously I've been using Dallas S on the RDX GPU and then FSR on the AMD GPU because I, I do think that's how people will use it, uh, especially when using path tracing because the RTX GPUs do have additional RTX options that will help you like uh, DL DLSS or RAID reconstruction and DLSS 4 etc. We do have FSR 4 as well on the AMD side. Uh, it is a little bit of a mission to get it implemented you have to use OptiScaler and because I only have a single test bench I'm not I'm opting not to use OptiScaler because it's a mission to try and restore the game files, etc. afterwards, especially if I now have to go back to my NVIDIA GPU to benchmark and that kind of stuff. But that option is definitely there. Now that we've got the gaming benchmarks out of the way, just one or two things. Uh, you'll notice that I mainly used the, the CNN model for upscaling right on the NVIDIA GPU side, even though most of these games do support the LSS4 uh, transformer model. And the reason for that is I did not go out of my way to use Opt OptiScaler to get FSR 4 in games, right? Now, both Dialysis 4 and FSR 4 upscaling have an additional performance hit, right? And that's why I did not want to use Dialysis 4 on the one side and FSR 3 on the other. And as I explained earlier, I think I did, uh, I did not use OptiScaler because I've got a single bench system and it is a mission to, uh, you know, change game files, do this, do that. And then when I plop in my NVIDIA GPU, I have to redo all that kind of stuff, remove it. And then if I put in the, the AMD GPU again, I have to redo all that again. So it's uh, it's a little bit of a mission. The only way I can actually work around it is if I do have uh, two hard drives or two SSDs that I can install all my games on and uh, the one side will just be modified AMD uh, files and the other one would just be normal the normal uh, base game files right uh, that's the only, only way I can think of to to get around that apart from getting a different system and then the other thing is pricing right you need to decide for yourself you need to ask yourself the question is a hundred and fifty dollars more we're we talking about MSRP pricing here is that $150 more for the RX 5070 Ti worth it to you? Some people will say no, some people will say yes, depending on their needs. But ultimately, you are the only one that can make that choice for you. I can show you benchmarks and you can you can make an informed decision based on that, but, but ultimately it is up to you. Now, I will say that I paid $800 for the 9070 XT and $1,000 for the 5070 Ti. And <laughs> at those prices, I would recommend neither of them, right? Wait for pricing to uh, to stabilize, if it ever will. Let's see if it gets a little bit closer back down to MSRP. And uh, then it might be worth it to have a look at them both. All right, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And as always, we hope to see you in the next one.